Welcome everyone. So today we're going to be uh, working with Apache Bean and Google AI Studio using Google Colab. In order to follow the workshop, you need to have a Gmail account okay? because, uh, well, you, you are accessing Google Colab, so you probably already have a Gmail account. But we're going to be using, using uh, Google AI Studio, and for that you need uh, Gmail. Okay, so the notebook is already linked in the chat and in the resources. Uh, I have also a solution notebook that I will share afterwards. It's here, okay, but I don't want to share the solution yet, okay? So we are here to learn, and solutions are poison for the learning process, okay? So when you look at them, they look easy, but uh, coming up with the same solution yourself, it's a lot of work, and that's actually the learning process. So, so I, I will share it uh, afterwards. So the goal today is to have some inputs from the users, uh, maybe do some combination of these inputs, like for instance, combine it with some prompting, present this combination to Gemini, and uh, uh, which is um, a large language model from, from Google that is available in Google AI Studio, and then get the outputs, the predictions of this model, and well, present them to another part of the pipeline. We are going to be using BinML. We are going to be using the run inference transform. And for the model side, we are going to be using AI Studio with an API key that you need to generate and use in the, in the notebook. Don't worry, we are going to be doing this step by step. So just um, wait for a minute and, and, and you see, you'll see all the details. In the notebook, I have already written some code. For instance, all the imports. It's just because I never remember exactly which imports I have to use. So that's already written some code, but we will try to write a lot of code also, let's say the most uh, important part in order to, let's say, to learn how to use a BNM. So, okay, so without further ado, in order to have a little bit more of a, a screen size, I'm going to put this here like this, okay? If you use the same notebook that I'm uh, using, so you will see my code there, okay, because it's shared with everyone. Um, so I recommend you to make a copy and to actually try to uh, follow along. Okay? If uh, during the uh, workshop you have any kind of issues, please use the chat. So I have it open here. So I should be and so I, I should be able to help you a little bit maybe if you put something in the chat. So let's start with AI Studio. Okay, so you have here a link in the notebook. So you open AI Studio. Maybe you are not familiar with AI Studio. So what is AI Studio? It's just Gemini and other models, see here we have Gemini 1.0 Pro, Gemini 1.5 Pro, Gemini Flash. So Gemini and some other models um, available to create your applications um, uh, using these models. Uh, the most simple use case is just, well, um, playing with the models as chat, okay? Like, hello, what's your name? So, uh, and the model, well, it doesn't have a name, well, whatever. So um, we can also use this model programmatically. Okay, so we have here, well, sorry about the uh, survey. So we have here some um, button here that says get code, okay? And you can see like for instance for Python, which is what we are using, there is already a little bit of code. So actually what we have been doing is copy pasting. We are gonna copy some code from these snippets that are shared by the by this uh, Google AI Studio, and then we are gonna put them in the right place in our pipeline. But for that snippet of code to work with our pipeline, we need an API key. Okay, so click here and uh, well, so I have unsaved change. I don't care. So just an example and try to create an API key. As you can see, I have already created one here. If you are based in the European Union, the UK, or Switzerland. Bad news. You need to enable billing in in this project that is, uh, gets created here in order to be able to use AI Studio. If you are everywhere else, and uh, so anywhere else, then you will well, you you can use this for free. There, there are certain limits about the number of calls that you can make. I think it's thirty per hour or something like that, or per minute. But it's gonna be much more than what we need for for this example. So um, wherever you are, just go here, create an API key. Okay, I'm gonna actually, I'm not gonna create it, okay, because uh, it's asking me to well to select a project, um, and I have already one. Okay, and if you are wondering, it's like, but I don't have a Google Cloud project, so how come? So how can I use this? Don't worry about that, okay, because Google AI Studio will create under the hood a project for you automatically, and you will not be building that project. 
Okay, so if you are not in the European Union, the UK or Switzerland, so you can issue this API key for free without having to enable any uh, billing at all. Okay. So the details of the project are here and the details of the API are here. If you click here, you will get the full API key. So I'm not gonna do that, okay? Because I don't want you to use my API key because it's actually, I'm based in Spain, the European Union, so I have to pay for this, okay? And this is my Gmail account, okay? So I'm paying for this uh, from my pocket, but by a few cents, it's uh, actually not a lot, okay? But then, um, so when you click here, you can get the, the API key. So take note of the API key. And the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be putting, in a, putting that uh, API key in a secret in Google Colab in order to be able to use it with, with, our, with our notebook, okay? So in Google Colab, you can see here on the left, this uh, there's a, a symbol of a key. So if you click here, you can define here um, a secret. Okay, let me let me add a new secret. I don't know if you can read it. It's a little bit small. Okay, it's good if you cannot read it because that's actually my API key. Okay, you you put here something like, for instance, Gemini, Gemini API key, which is what where it's in the notebook, and then you copy paste here whatever. Okay. So and let me just remove this because I have already here uh, this hidden. Don't worry about putting this in collab. This is associated to your Gmail account. No one else will see uh, the API key. You can try and, for instance, um, uh, go to the secrets in this notebook, which is the same, the, the link that I shared with you is exactly this notebook. And you can see that there is no secret there. Okay, So you don't have my API key. So this is totally personal. It's not attached to the notebook. It's attached to your account. Okay, So you can share a notebook with the secret and the secret will not be shared. So please go ahead, generate your API key and copy paste it here. And remember that we're using Gemini API key as, as name. The name, you can change it later in the source code if you want. Okay, uh, and that's all. So I'm gonna be running the first cell. I'm gonna connect here to the runtime. We don't need any kind of a special runtime. We don't need a GPU or anything because our model is not running locally. Our model is gonna be running in AI Studio. And we're gonna be communicating with the model, sending some data and returning and getting the, the, the answers uh, from, from the model, okay? So it's already connected and I'm gonna run this cell. Okay, so this is already installed. You will see some error messages that you can perfectly ignore. So what we have installed here is Apache Bean with the interactive runner. So the, yesterday there were some questions and not sure if it was in the session that I had or in, in another session, there were some questions about, can I have an interactive runner with Apache Bean where I see intermediate results without having to run the full pipeline? Yes, you can. And this is what we're gonna be using here today, okay? So I'm gonna hide the output of this cell and I'm gonna move on. So here we're gonna be in, um, importing this interactive bean thing. And this is what is gonna allow us to see intermediate results without having to run the full pipeline. And we are actually today, I don't think we're gonna be running the full pipeline. We're gonna be just um, having a look at each one of the, of the key collections that we're gonna be creating uh, to see that everything is going well, okay? Good. So let me run uh, this cell here and then move on to this uh, cell uh, here. So we are gonna be running a streaming pipeline and we're gonna be using the interactive runner, okay? So what, So these are the options that I'm using here with Apache Bean. Uh, since, I, since I'm running only in code, uh, so, and these are normally things that are, you pass as command line options. Well, I've, I found this to be much uh, easier to, to pass uh, uh, as like using this, okay? So this lazy way of specifying the options. Good. Uh, we already have our pipeline options. Let, let's just start with the machine learning side. So Gemini, uh, it's, a, a, it's a large language model uh, that can help you well, answer questions uh, and solve tasks, okay? Um, the model has already encoded somehow some knowledge about the world, okay? Like for instance, geography, which is what we are gonna be seeing um, uh, today here, okay? So in order to have the model do the task that you want, you do you need to do some prompting, okay? So you are probably familiar with this, no? All these prompt engineering things and all this, okay? So this is the prompt that we're gonna be seeing here today, okay? So let's let's try this first manually. So let me copy this, okay? Let me go here to Google AI Studio. Let's create a new prompt, okay? Let me copy paste here, okay? No, well, I cannot make this bigger, okay? 
but I'm just telling the model um, that it's well. Let me let me let me put here so that is an expert in geography that knows all the capitals of the world. Okay, there are two ways of getting the model to do what you want. Okay, that are the way of trying to um, praise the model so to flatter it uh, and to make it work in the way that you want. You, you could also try to like to threaten it. Sometimes it works, but normally in my experience pricing works better than threaten, threatening, like, just like with people. So we are pressing here the model a little bit, okay? And we are telling that whenever you have a country name, you reply with its capital. For instance, the capital of France is Paris. However, however, well, I don't know if you knew this, okay? So I like to tease my kids and my nephews with this kind of thing. Since Switzerland has no capital. I don't know if there is anyone from Switzerland here in, in, in the call. But officially, the Swiss constitution doesn't establish any city of the country as a capital because it's a federation and it's kind of a distributed federation. So officially, it doesn't have a capital. For sure, it has a place in the country where the government is, but that's actually not officially the capital. So we want this, we want our model to be as picky as I am and reply that when the country is Switzerland, it should reply with there is no officially recognized capital. Okay. For, for instance, if I rem actually if I remove this, let me let me remove this and I will copy paste. And I ask, what's the capital of Switzerland? Well, let, let, let's see what we get. Okay, so this is machine learning. We never know what we are gonna get as output. Okay, well, ah, the model is wrong. Okay, well, the capital of Switzerland is burned. Well, probably you have uh, you would have answered the same. Okay. But we can make the model to answer something different. Okay, so now let me copy here the prompt. This, okay, where we are just telling the model that when the uh, country is Switzerland, it should reply something different, okay? And I put here as country, Switzerland. And if everything goes well, the model should only reply with the name, uh, with, with a, a sentence that we have uh, put, not, not, not everything in, uh, okay? There is no officially recognized capital, okay? And then if even if I now ask the same because the model has the context, well, see, okay, perfect. And the model is doing what the what we what we want, okay? And if I put something like this, country Spain, it should say Madrid, okay? It's working as intended, okay? So this is what we're gonna be doing in our pipeline. We are going to be presenting a list, a list of countries. We want the capitals of those countries, except in the case of Switzerland, that we want the model to reply this. Okay, so we are going to have to combine the input of the user with this prompt, because if we don't put this prompt, the model will tell us that the capital of Switzerland is Bern. Okay, good. So this is the prompt that we are going to be using. You can later play with this and use different prompts and whatever. Okay, so the, you, we don't have to use this. This is just an example. For the sake of this example, we're gonna make five calls to the model. So we're gonna present five countries only: Spain, Switzerland, Argentina, Japan, Colombia. Okay, so I have created this uh, here uh, in, in this cell. Okay, I'm running. I have run this cell, and we have, uh, uh, and now we have our input. Now, how do we make Bean to use Gemini without having to write a lot of code? Okay, so let me actually go here to the web page, uh, web page of uh, Apache Bean, and there should be a banner here. So you see this Bean machine learning operations. Let me click here. So Bean has support for machine learning. It has always had the support for machine learning. It was used a lot, for instance, in the scope of ML Ops. Okay. But here we're going to be using for, for the different uh, tasks. We're going to be using, uh, be using uh, BNML for uh, inference, for predictions. We are going to present some input to the model and we want the output. Okay. So for that, for that we have this run inference transform. Okay. And there are lots of examples here of how to use this. Run inference can work with local models using TensorFlow, using PyTorch, scikit-learn. Uh, and many other formats that I don't remember right now. Okay, but let me actually share the link here in the chat if you want to have a look at, uh, later on. It also works with remote models. Uh, for instance, uh, an endpoint that you have deployed in Vertex AI or any other kind of remote model if you happen to have a 
snippet of code that knows how to communicate with the model, okay, which is our case here. Uh, well, I didn't say this, I forgot. Um, if you use TensorFlow PyTorch with a local model, uh, for instance, if you're using data flow, so you can also use with this with a GPU and let's say the running frame transfer will make sure that you use the GPU. Uh, and the running frame transfer, it has other goodies. For instance, it makes sure that there is only one copy of the model loaded in memory at once, okay? Because, well, in a single worker, you don't need to have lots of copies of the same model because you can, re you can reuse that. So it, it makes an efficient use of memory and many other goodies that let's say just come out of the box available with a uh, running frames, okay? But now so running frames doesn't support all the situations right, right yet, okay? So like for instance, can I use Google AI Studio with a uh, running frames? Yes, you, you can, you can actually use anything, as I said, but there is no a handler for a model uh, in Google AI Studio, let's say by default yet. So we're gonna have to write our own. To write our own, we have to export from model handler, handler here. Like we have to do extend, sorry, no, export, extend from model handler. And this, let me go back to the one of the first cells. This is something that we have implemented, uh, imported from the uh, uh, BNML, right? Okay. And when we do that, so we need to uh, we need to um, override two methods. This method I have already um, written that for you, and we will cover this step by step later. Okay, uh, but this one, well, we need we will need to write it. So we need to create a, a model, okay, and load it in this method. And run inference will call this method whenever it needs, and it will make sure that there's only one copy in memory and so on and so on, okay? We don't care about how that's done. We only care about how to load the model. And I also put here as a constructor the API key because we're gonna, well, we're gonna need the API key here in the loading of the model to for, for, for the model to work, okay? Um, so um, to load the model, what can we do? Well, this is when we go to Google AI Studio and copy paste the code that was there, and we so we copy there and we paste it here. Let, let's see that. And um, before that, let me let me see if the, there's a question here. Do we have a rate limit to make inferences with the Beam pipeline to the Gemini API? Yes, we can. We do. Okay, so uh, we are not implementing any rate limiting. Uh, here in this example, um, but in the documentation of Apache Bean, uh, there is a rate limiter for calling external, uh, well, for actually for calling functions in general. Um, and in some of the examples that are linked in the BeanML page, uh, so you actually have the rate limiter that ap ap applied. It's actually rather easy. You just put the conditions for, let's say, the amount of calls that you want to make per minute, and run inference make sure, will make sure with this rate limiter that you you that said that it will that you you will fulfill those, those conditions so have a look at the uh, uh, notebooks and examples that are shared with uh, with bnml okay and 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 there you will have some some examples okay so, uh, of uh, the rate limiter but this is that's actually one of the another goodie of a uh, run inference okay so it solves all these situations in particular with this, this kind of apis and, and in this case specifically because we're using a free api key we have a very constrained uh, rate limits in the API, okay? So very low rate limits in the API, so it's good to, to use a rate limiter. But because we're gonna be using this with five examples only, um, let's say I want to maintain the example as simple as possible, we are ignoring that for the moment. Check out the examples and all the details are there. Okay, good, good. Then let's go to Google AI Studio. So here we go to Google AI Studio, and well, there are lots of parameters that we can use with this model. We can even use different models. Uh, these Gemma models that cannot be used remotely. Uh, okay, they can be used in, in Google AI Studio, but not with API, the API. So we need to choose one of these three. Because I'm using my personal <laughs> uh, Visa card, and I'm paying from my pocket because I'm based in Spain. I'm gonna use the Gemini 1.5 Flash because it's the cheapest of the three, so three options. It's actually the one that they has uh, the, the lowest uh, prediction latency. It's the fastest model, okay? So I'm gonna use this one. I encourage you to try any other model, like for instance, this one here, which is a larger model than Flash. Um, 
the, the prediction is going to take a slightly more time, but it's going to be almost immediate, you will see. Um, and you're using, if you're using the free API key, so, well, it shouldn't be a difference. So I'm going to use this one. And you could also uh, change some settings here, and, th and this will be reflected in the code, OK? Let me, I don't know. For I don't want the output in JSON. I don't want this to be ex executing code. And the safety settings, uh, well, I, I can change them if I want, OK? In our case, because we are talking about geography, I don't think this is going to have any influence in the results, OK? The temperature, well, we could put it higher so for the model to be wilder, or this for the model to be more factual, maybe. But well, let's let's leave it at one because uh, our manual tests were doing were done with one and it was working. I don't want to. Well, let's put it maybe one point zero five, slightly different than one, so you can see that the code gets updated with this. Okay. And when we are happy with all these settings, we click here and get code. And well, so we we have here all the code that we need. You, you see, here are all the all the parameters that we have selected in the UI. So all the code that we need in order to um, to use the the model. Okay, so we are gonna be actually copying from here, import OS, import this. This package is already available in Google Collab, so we don't have to import anything. Gni configure. Okay, great. The configuration, the model. We are gonna be using Gemini one point flash. Okay. And I'm going to copy only until this point, OK? Because the model is already created. The rest of the code that appears here is about how to use this model in a chat session, which might be super relevant, OK? But it's not what we need at this point, OK? So I have already copied this here. And I'm going to paste this in this uh, uh, here as the body of the mo load model function. Let me actually paste here. Bear, be careful with indentation, OK? So this has to be inside the function. This has to be inside the function. This has to be inside the function. Let me actually select everything. This has to be inside the function, OK? Let me put some more space here. Let me maybe remove some space here. Uh, let me remove the comments, OK? So people doesn't know that I actually have copy pasted the code from some place, OK? Let me remove this also. And then here, this is the model. Um, uh, so uh, here, we are going to be, um, uh, so let me actually have a look at the solution to see what I did here. What is the solution? Yes. We are going to be actually just returning this. I didn't remember what was the API for running, friends, OK? So we're going to be here returning the model, OK? Let me just put maybe a little bit more of a, a here of indentation. So we return here the model, OK? Good. So this is the load model uh, um, code. Does this have to be an LLM model? No, this could be anything. If you have a way to communicate to an external service that if you present one input to the service, it returns a prediction, so you can use that with a run inference too, okay? Because all that we are doing here is actually using some model, which is a an object that allows us to uh, communicate with a, with a, an external service, Gemini in this case. Okay, so basically what this uh, what it makes is well, so this makes an import. It's perfectly fine to leave these imports locally here in this method. This method is going to be only called once per worker. It's not going to be called a lot of times. Here, the API key, well, we need to actually change this because this is not going to be in the environment. This is going to be this variable that we're going to pass when we construct the object later. The generation config, we don't have to do anything. And then here, it's all good, OK? So how does the run inference um, method works? OK, well, so the run inference method re receives a set of uh, predictions. Uh, no, sorry, a set of inputs, not predictions. Inputs, not predictions. Inputs. The model, which is created with the load model um, uh, method. How does the model get passed to this method? We don't care about that, OK? We just have to know that whenever this method is called, this model is the same one that we have created in load model. And inference arguments that, well, we don't have 
any in this case, so we are not going to use uh, any here. Okay, we could have maybe used this as inference arguments, but again, for the sake of simplicity, we are not going to use any. And then for each one of the inputs, so we're going to have here because our inputs are going to be strings. Okay, our inputs are going to be these ones that you see up here. Okay, so it's going to be just strings. Okay, it's not going to be JSON, it's not going to be nothing, it's going to be just strings. Okay. And the prompt, if you look at the prompt, so we, it was another string with a space here. We're gonna, gonna, we're gonna just combine the prompt with each one of the inputs. And then we're gonna call the method generate content for the model. And this will call L the LLM. It will send the, 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 all the prompt and it will get the answer back. Okay. And this will be, this will be actually a, an object that has a lot of info. Okay. It has the prediction itself. It has, if there's any kind of error, information about the error. And uh, if there are several answers, they, it will contain several answers as well, okay? So here we will only have one, okay? So that's why from the candidates, we only get the first one, okay? And it will be only text, okay? But you could actually get more complex stuff. And for each one of these outputs uh, as text, we will just yield, return, uh, the each one of these because we are iterating over several inputs we cannot use return here so i use that yield and the for loop will continue okay so the the function doesn't end here okay that's why i'm using yield there are many other ways of doing this also you could accumulate in the list return the list uh, many other things but this is uh, what i'm using here let me actually try to see if this okay this uh, runs correctly so doesn't it doesn't have any kind of syntax errors so we can now continue with the pipeline. So far, we haven't done any bin other than creating the model handler, but we haven't written any kind of pipeline or transforms or anything. Okay, so but we are about to do that now. Okay, and we are gonna uh, start creating uh, the pipeline. I'm gonna return my API, API key from the uh, oh notebook doesn't have a, a secret access. Okay, I'm gonna grant access to this. Okay, good. So I have now this here. Uh, so in this variable, I have my API key, and now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna create here the rest of the pipeline. So for that, I'm gonna be using uh, new cells. Okay, I could write everything in the in other cells, but I'm gonna use new cells. So I'm gonna run this first. What is in the countries variable uh, in the countries P collection? Okay, so well, it's kind of an easy question, right? Because it's a create with a static set of data. But in order to showcase the interactive runner, so let me show you how you can have a look at EP collection. If, if I if I put this here, I will just obtain, well, this is a P collection of something, okay? Nothing useful, right? So this is not really very useful information. I don't want to see this. I want to see the content of the P collection. Before we had the interactive runner in BIN some years ago, so it was this was a problem because you couldn't have like visibility step by step about how your pipeline was behaving. Okay. But now you can do with the interactive runner, interactive bin, you can say dot show, right? Here it is. Well, you can actually also like show the graph of the pipeline, even. Let me let me see. Okay. It's a very simple pipeline so far, right? Because it has only one transform. Okay. And we can also have a look. Here and instead of show graph, we can put here show countries, and then we will see the content of this variable. Okay. See, which is well, the input that we have put, right? Okay. Question in the chat. When we make the API call to the model, the Python will well until it gets a response. Yes. Each one of the calls that is made to the model, okay, here in this case, when we are calling this line, it will be blocking the pipeline. If you are running in a, in, a, in a big runner, data flow, flink, and so on, that will be parallelization, lots of threads running in parallel, et cetera. Uh, and then let's say the full pipeline will not be blocked. But each one of the threads will be waiting until it gets a response from the model and then proceed to, 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 move, to move on. Okay. So if the model is super slow, the pipeline is going to be super slow. If the model has very restricted a rate limiting thing so well so the pipeline can only move at that pace let's say if you have i don't know 30 calls per minute and you set up the rate limiter to be 30 calls per minute you will be moving at the pace of 30 elements per minute okay because the calls are 
uh, blocking. Yes, so the calls are uh, just uh, blocking. So this this call here to the model, this is totally blocking. Okay. Okay, moving on. So we have here shown the countries. Okay, this is actually not not a mystery. We already knew that this. Okay, but but we, this we can apply to any P collection. Okay. So let's actually start writing the next step. So how do we do that? So here in the countries, so we have a P collection of strings, which is just what we need uh, for um, uh, for our run inference uh, uh, pipeline. And you can see here that the machine learning uh, auto-completing is actually already uh, writing code for me, okay? And then, well, so I call my model handler, uh, well, the model handler is a model handler, is a Gemini model handler, and actually, well, let me, let me, let me just put this here, um, uh, auto-completed, okay? Um, remember that the constructor had this parameter, uh, one only parameter, which is the API key. I got the API key here from my secret because I previously stored my key in the in the secret store of Google Collab. I did that before the workshop. Okay, if you haven't done that yet, so do it, or this is not gonna work. Okay, well, actually, this call should have failed if you would have done, if you don't have the API key here. Okay, and now let me call these predictions. Okay, assign these to predictions. Okay, so we have the countries, and then we pass this to the run inference. And because we are using this model handler, this will be combined with the prompt presented to. Um, uh, the LLM and so on. I run this and look, it runs super fast. Why is that? Because it has not run now, okay? It's not running yet. So this is lazy evaluation, okay? So this is the specification of what's going to happen, but it has not run yet. When we run the pipeline, I could call .p.run for instance, but then it will be useless because we will not see the output, okay? Or I could do this, the interactive runner. Look, show me what it would run so far in these predictions, okay? Let's see what we get. And now it may take a while because we're, Iva. okay. Prompt is not defined, okay? Well, let me, let me, uh, it should be defined, okay? Let me, let me run all the, ah, I didn't run this cell. I didn't run this cell, okay, no, sorry, okay. Let me run this, okay, and let me run again this. I made this silly mistake. Well, now it's taking a while. It's going to go to them. Oh, okay, here it is, okay. So the, the returns, the, the results are returned in the same order as the input, okay. So we see Spain, Madrid, Switzerland. There is no officially recognized capital instead of Bern because it's using our prompt. Buenos Aires, Tokyo, and Bogota. See, now we have made our first inference pipeline in a streaming using Gemini and, and, and LLM, as easy as this, okay? Now you can play with whatever you want, okay? Like say for instance that I change this, okay? And I put just, I, I remove the prompt here, okay? And then, well, who knows what we are gonna get here, okay? Or maybe maybe we could put something like, like this. What's the capital of, let me actually put here an F string, okay? What's the capital of this country, okay? Okay, and then I run this, okay? And then I run everything. So this is gonna be the same input, but now the prompts that we're gonna be presenting, it's, uh, they are different. And the model, the model doesn't have any context. It's not gonna remember anything because we are not putting any memory. If you go to Google AI Studio, you could actually um, uh, do prompts that have a chat, a memory, and so on. Okay, let me let me show you very quickly here. So if you go to here, see, you can have history. You, you can have, see, a lot of uh, things. Uh, so the model remembers the conversation, so, but we are not doing that. So, and because we are not doing that, if we run this now, Let's see if we actually get the, and I, don't, I don't even remember where I ran. Maybe, maybe let's see if this works. If not, I will run it again. See, now we get an entirely different output, okay? So it says the capital of Switzerland is burned, the capital of Argentina is Buenos Aires, and so on, okay? Good, okay, and then if we recover here our prompt, okay? 
Just prompt plus B again. We will get the same output as before. Good. What if I want to actually run the pipeline? Then, well, I can add another step here. For instance, I could do a predictions and being a map a print. Okay. Let's see. This should work. Okay. Good. And then I could do a p dot run, and maybe I will see some output here, the output of the model, because I'm calling again the LLM. Okay. See, here's the output again. Okay. okay. So this is the same as a, uh, this is running the pipeline. Okay. We have been using the interactive runner, and here we are just running running the pipeline. Okay, folks. So so this is on. Okay. So let's recap a little bit about what we have done. Okay. So you may be a little bit disappointed, like it cannot be this easy to use ML with Bing. It is okay. So this is actually the magic of run inference. So what we have done is we have imported run inference and we have used a custom model handler because we had some code that we know how to uh, how to create a model. Okay. So this model just happens to be a model from Google AI Studio that has this uh, uh, Python code here uh, after generating an API key and so on, and we can just use it like this. Okay. So after that, well, we just create a pipeline with some input. In this case, we are combining here with the prompt that we, we that we want, but it could be anything. And then when the model is presented with those inputs, it returns these predictions. Okay. And again, this works with anything: local models using TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn. Uh, you can import hugging face pipelines uh, remotely without having to load anything locally. You just put the reference to the hugging face pipeline. And the, the worker will download it automatically. You can use remote models like uh, the ones that we have seen here. There are handlers already for a lot of situations. For Google AI Studio, not just yet, okay, and they will be actually very soon um, um, included in the run inference. And this workshop will have no. It, it will be even easier in that in that case because we will not even have to to write the model handler even. Okay, so so it's this easy. Okay, so um. If, if you look at uh, how to make inference in a streaming at large scale, so here we're running a very small example, but we could have done this at very large scale. There are really there is really no standard right now uh, out there in the community to 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 do um, inference streaming pipelines, uh, especially if you're working in the cloud. It's one of the providers, Google uh, or other providers, and then, so they, they have the endpoints uh, uh, offering. For uh, putting uh, models uh, and being able to call them online, and you can do some streaming inference, maybe I don't know, combining lambdas, cloud functions with that, and so on and so on. But, but again, you are attached to to, to the platform no, of this provider. You need to have an endpoint, use a lambda, a cloud function. If you want to have a standard solution that is not attached to any platform, I, I think that right now, Bean is the only solution uh, that guarantees this. So I think there's a lot of potential that. Um, as we, uh, as new use cases for using streaming inference appear, um, so a Bing will be will have even a, a more prominent role in this in this field. Okay, um, if, if you think of how many of these new websites that are appearing around AI work, like generating images and doing all kinds of uh, wild stuff, uh, a lot of them so have to run things asynchronously. So this. Is the perfect scenario to run something with something like a, with Apache Bean. So you just send your predictions and wait for the predictions to be ready. When they're ready in your output, in some kind of message queue, Kafka, whatever. So you load them in your web, in your app, and so on. So it's actually, it, it is very easy to write the pipeline and very easy to integrate with any kind of existing platform, any web or any app. 